I am here with Texas Rangers prospect Ricky Venasco. It's an honor to have you. I'd much rather be doing this in person somewhere along the road, but due to quarantine and the season, um, it's an honor to have you on our third episode of Meeting the It's an honor to be here, man. It's, uh, it's always awesome talking to everyone, uh, letting them know a little bit about me and honestly distracting me during this quarantine, so. How's your quarantine been, though? Any hobbies keeping up with us? Uh, honestly, just going to the field, throwing every day, working out, just kind of doing what I can to stay busy and then come back to the the room and playing video games until the night ends. So. Oh, yeah. Same. So let's get it started. You played uh, high school ball in Florida, 53 yeah. innings, 87 Ks, committed to Stetson, what was it like being the uh, spotlight on campus for high school, at least, in Florida? I know Florida's a big baseball. I'm from New York, so it's a big uh, baseball down there in Florida. So. Right. Um, I mean, so my, uh, my whole baseball, like, dream was, like, always obviously to play in the big leagues. Um, and my 10th grade year going into my junior year was, like, really when it, like, opened up my eyes and started to gain velo. I, grew finally hit my growth spurt and it was uh it was like my junior year was when I got the call from Stetson about coming out there and um doing my visit and stuff and like I knew right away like that was my that that was my school I wanted to go to it was close to home uh it was a small town where I'm from and uh, it was like it was just like felt like home to me so uh and then my senior year I never really had like an idea of like even ever getting drafted out of high school it was never a thought to me and then it was like I came out my first day on my senior year of baseball and it was just like amazed like blowing up 90s 91 92 and it was just like wow like this might be a dream come true I, I'm not sure yet but uh no it was awesome I mean I always got calls after and after from scouts um my agent was uh, – I met my agent my senior summer. And, I mean, he's always been with me ever since. He's a great guy. Called me my first day after uh, – I think it was my first day after tryouts my senior year. And he was like, hey, like, I'm so-and-so. And I was like, it's my guy. <laughs> it's my guy. But, no, it was uh, – I mean, it was awesome, uh, especially coming from my hometown. Like, we only had, like, six or seven guys – ever go like play pro ball and they've uh all come back and like haven't we've had a, a couple of guys with some big league time but um they've all come back and have just helped out the community from now and all our coaches and um I want to be the be the one that makes it and sticks for a little bit you know mm -hmm. were there any other colleges that offered you and just uh, Edson was the one that you would have gone to if you weren't drafted so I got a couple. Um, I got some from UNF. I got some from Notre Dame. And then the Gators uh, came after me my senior year after they saw me in um, the World of Woodbat tournament in Georgia. And I was already committed to Stetson, and I knew where I wanted to go. Like, I knew, I knew if Stetson was where I was wanting to go, if anything uh, – didn't happen, but yeah, I got a couple different offers. So then, Brett Campbell, Ranger Scout, stated that the ball exploded out of Ricky's hand. He got more than 88 to 92 in the tank. That was senior year of high school. And then you get drafted. What was draft day like? The draft day was frustrating for me. Draft day was super frustrating. Um, I remember I was at my uh, – my ex-girlfriend's house and we were just sitting there just watching the draft watching the draft day by day and uh the next the third day isn't on um tv so I was like well I was listening to it on my phone and like my whole family's there and I went to go get subway and my agent calls me and goes hey man congrats on getting drafted and I was like what are you talking about like I hadn't heard anything nobody called me like didn't hear from anyone and he goes yeah you just got picked by the rangers 15th round I was like really and he goes yeah I was like wow this is awesome 
So I guess they, they pulled me off the board and said nothing. I was just like on the way to Subway. I get to Subway and I'm like screaming in my car. But uh, no, draft day was frustrating. Huh? Did you get your Subway at least? I did get my Subway, yeah. I made sure I got my Subway and then I went back home. And then uh, I uh, went home and told my family and they all, it was awesome. It was, a, it was a great, draft day is a great experience. So then you, where did you report to right after that? Uh, like eventually so my I was in uh, negotiation for my contract so I showed up a little late to uh, Arizona and I remember it like it was yesterday seemingly because it's 105 out right now but uh, I remember my first day I showed up got my gear like I was excited I was ready to get going and I walked out of the clubhouse doors the double doors that go to the backfields and it just felt like I walked into an oven like if you had the oven on like 600 degrees and you just opened it and you let the heat hit you, that's what it felt like. I walked out, like I opened the door, it was 125 outside and I turned right around and walked back inside and I looked at one of the guys who got drafted with me and I just looked at him and I was like, so is this how it always is or it's just, just like a special day? And he's like, nah, we're in the desert now. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You dealt with adversity right away though. Would you like explain to explain the story of you and Sam Huff? Uh, it's like a brief, if you, whatever, however long you want to go with it. But. Um, so, me and Sam was obviously my catcher my first year. Uh, we we got close. He uh, it was Padres two. Um, it was like seven o'clock ish, and I was rolling in the first two innings of the game, and uh, I had walked a batter and he got on and. He evidently went and stole for second, and my finish coming out of high school, like the way I finished, the way my body moved, was so flexible, and I wouldn't necessarily say wrong, but it was wrong. Like I literally could probably touch my toe, like my nose to my toe, and um, I caught the ball like a glimpse of it after Sam threw down the second, and it was so low to the ground that. I didn't have like very much time to get out of the way and it like skimmed my right shoulder and caught me right in the back of the head and it knocked me out. So the, the recovery I know for, so I'm, of course a concussion probably. Yeah. Yeah. I had a grade two mild concussion. Were you always with, did you go end up going home or did you stay at the Red uh, Rangers facilities to uh, rehab and go through concussion protocol and everything? Um, so it was, so I, I was so like upset that it happened that I kept trying to take the concussion protocol test and I failed it four times in a row. Like each day I failed it. So the fifth time I finally passed it. And then that's when my concussion protocol started. And like, I really couldn't, I didn't, couldn't do anything like within those five days. So then I just had to basically like restart everything. And we were in, um, playoffs at that point so I couldn't play or do anything so I was just like sitting in the um bleachers watching us play and it was like painful to do but yeah and then so I went through my seven days and then we got sent home before instructs and then I came back out for instructs and finished off the season that way so how how long was that or the recovery for that like uh um the recovery was probably two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Fast forward now. You're ranked as high as number 16 on the prospect list for the Texas Rangers. Um, what keeps you motivated to, to keep going? I mean, hometown, your dreams, um, guides, you know? I mean, obviously my hometown, like, is – and my family are the reasons that I have that drive me. But – um it's like deeper, it's personal for me because like I've never got handed anything in my life. Like I've had to always like work for what I've wanted and to like finally work and have my success show is like what keeps me going because I just want more and more of it at this point. And I've, I've had my adversity and I've worked through it and now it's time to just like it's just time to take off at this point. And it's, it's awesome to finally like see it go and 
make something of it. Now, more of the fun side. What was your coolest pro moment throughout your career so far? Uh, coolest pro moment? Probably pitching against mm, – yeah, probably pitching against Del Marva and uh, – in Hickory, they uh, the, I literally got to Hickory, pitched maybe three games, and then I was in playoffs. So it was like bam, bam, and I was up against the like best team in the whole playoffs, and I pitched the first game of them at home, and that was just like it was exciting. They made me work for every single pitch. So them boys, I'll tell you what, say they were some dogs. It was awesome though. I ended up winning. I went six, I think, with like 12 Ks. It was, it was awesome. Have you been to the new Globe Life field? Uh, we were there in Instructs, in Texas Instructs this past year uh, when they were still building it. So we, I have not seen it when it's done, now. And you, I'm guessing for when you signed your contract, you were there at in the old Arlington? Uh, I was not. No, I did not get invited there. Oh. But I uh, have uh, two more questions for you and then I'll let you go can can you show us some of your pitch grips if you got a baseball on hand you got to have a baseball in there um I don't think I have a baseball in here honestly wow <laughs> yeah it's depressing but I don't have one in here no but honestly like four seam fastball um I have my curveball grip it's like uh it's called a knuckle curve um it's almost a spike where I I basically hold it like this the baseball's in here and then I put my finger on the top place and then I just throw it like a football and then I have my change up grip. It's almost like a split, but um, I keep my three fingers on the side and then I pull my thumb up and then I put the baseball between me, my middle finger and my index finger. And last but not least, any advice for the kids chasing their dreams? Any advice for the kids chasing your dreams? Um, If you can come from a 1A baseball school with the graduating class of 75 and be a top prospect in the organization after getting hurt your two first years in pro baseball and loving the game, just chase any dream you can possibly do because it can come true. I promise you that. All right. Thank you, Ricky, for joining us. On our third episode of the meeting to keep smiling supporters, um, it's an honor to have you. Thank you, I appreciate it, and it's an honor to be here.